Hi everyone! So today we're going to explore alkaline ionized water in part one of a two-part series that I've really been looking forward to filming because I get this question all the time. Everybody wants to know about these alkalizing ionizers and the supposedly healing water that they produce. I mean, it seems like alkaline water, Kangen machines, and similar is so trendy. Like everybody and their woke cousin is hopping on this fad with some fancy machine or another. And I'm here to burst some bubbles because alkaline water can be either really beneficial or really not, depending on what makes it alkaline. So first we're going to talk about the difference between natural alkaline water versus what's coming out of these filter machines. And then in the second video, we're going to take a look at some of the claims as to alkaline ionized water's ability to neutralize acids and combat free radicals in the body. And then you'll have a jumping off point to do your own research and make your own informed decisions. <laughs> Usually alkaline water comes from one of these machines or in water bottles from the store, which is just reverse osmosis tap water that's then been alkalized through an electrolysis process. And most people do suffer from acidosis just due to our diet and lifestyle and inflammation. So most bodies are pretty acidic and it can be good to get a little bit more towards the alkaline side of the spectrum for sure for healing temporarily. But alkalosis is actually just as dangerous as acidosis. And once you've healed any ailments that might be created or exacerbated by acidosis, acidosis, you really want to maintain a fairly neutral pH in your body. I mean, in nature, water is fairly neutral or even just slightly acidic most of the time. The only super highly alkaline water anywhere in nature is alkaline because of the ionic minerals that it contains, not because it's been electrocuted to separate the hydrogen as in the case with these machines. Now remember, what we do to our water, we do to ourselves. So electrocuting your water is maybe not a good idea. We did not adapt over the millennia to drink that, so I would just be wary of it. Now your blood is meant to be very neutral, and depending on what your blood type is, if you have blood type O, for example, it can be even just a tiny bit acidic. So if you expose your body to these really harsh and overly alkalizing waters over the long term, it can have damaging effects. So for one thing, you need hydrochloric acid and acidophilus for a healthy functioning digestion. Acidophilus in Latin literally means acid-loving bacteria, acidophile. And certain parts of your body should be really acidic to stay healthy, certain strains of unhealthy bacteria bacteria and parasites actually thrive in a gut that's too alkaline, like H. pylori, for example. It's relatively common among people whose body chemistry is overly alkaline from too much time drinking this kind of water from these machines. And I spoke with a naturopath who does live blood analysis under a dark field microscope in Santa Fe. And when she sees people who have been drinking alkaline water for too long, they actually have a preponderance of ruptured cells. You can actually see how their cells have kind of exploded in the bloodstream because the body has to work really hard to keep the blood neutral when the water that you drink is highly alkaline. Now remember, the water you drink becomes your blood within five minutes. So the body has to neutralize alkaline water really quickly and really effectively. And after years of drinking this unnatural water, it just becomes harder for the body to adapt and thus the cells can begin to rupture. Now consider this, there are two ways to make alkaline water. You can make it really easily at home just by adding some baking soda, you know, sodium hydroxide or, or bicarbonate in one of these, or you can make it through one of these electrolysis machines. Now the ionizers produce this unnaturally alkaline water by electrocuting the water molecule to split it in half, which separates the hydrogen from the oxygen. So the second method produces alkaline ionized water that contains hydrogen gas. Now, interestingly, you don't get the same benefits from drinking the baking soda soda alkaline water that you will get from drinking the electrically alkalized water. Why is that? Because the second contains so much more hydrogen. So you can actually receive the same health benefits by selectively incorporating hydrogen peroxide supplementation or using molecular hydrogen tablets in your water. Because when you remove the hydrogen gas from alkaline ionized water, all of the health benefits are eliminated as well. So the amount of hydrogen that one of these machines can produce 
it really just depends on the TDS or total dissolved solids and the source water that you're starting with. So it varies. And the tap water going into the filter has to have a TDS of at least 100 parts per million to facilitate enough hydrogen in the final water for it to have any beneficial effect. Even the president of the Korean Water Society, who conducted a ton of studies showing the effectiveness of alkaline water against things like diabetes and cancer, he also showed that when the hydrogen gas was removed, the water was no longer healing. So it's really not the pH. This is the key thing. It's not the pH that's healing. It's the hydrogen. And Dr. Hidemitsu Hayashi, a cardiac surgeon and the director of the Water Institute in Japan, he was one of the very early pioneering research on kangen and alkaline ionized water. And his work also determined that the benefits of alkaline ionized water were just due to the hydrogen water. And he eventually totally abandoned the ionized water movement and devoted his career and his efforts towards hydrogen-rich water instead. Now, there have been three separate studies showing that drinking alkaline ionized water in the long term could cause cell death, necrosis, like we were talking about before, fibrosis, and other complications in the heart muscle. So to see the links to those studies, you want to pop over to my site and check out the text associated with this video. So there are also concerns over the machine's ability to remove heavy metals from the water and their potential to create hydrogen isotopes called deuterium, just depending on what their cathodes are made of. But we're not going to go into all of that today suffice it to say there are better options available and you know it's nuanced each person has the sovereignty to decide how their thirst is quenched because as you can see not all water is created equal and what you drink you become so to learn more about the various different kinds of water and how they affect us differently you can check out a little mini course that i've created that will guide you through the weird world of water from tap to bottle to reverse osmosis and more you know our bodies are 70 percent water by volume but molecularly they're 99.92 percent water molecules so we want to make much more empowered choices about how we hydrate and please stay tuned for the next video where we're going to dive into some of the claims that alkaline water machine representatives make, like whether the water is capable of neutralizing acids and free radicals, whether or not the water is structured, etc, etc. So I hope you've gotten some value out of this. If you've learned something new, please share it, like, comment, subscribe, etc. You can find me on Instagram at Jen Isabel Friend, my website waterislife.love, and I will see you in the next video. Stay hydrated, friends.